anyway, for this video, what I want to do is I want to show you how to use the unit circle to find the six trig functions for a couple of given angles. So I have given two different angles here. One is pi over three and the other is negative three pi over two. And for both of them, I gave you the radian measurement, which corresponds to the arc length. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with the first one, which is pi over three, and we're going to find the sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent for each of the angles. I do have another video that does show you all of the rules and where they come from, and I also have a video that shows you how to set up the unit circle, so if you're confused on those, make sure that you check those two videos out. All right, so the first one that we're going to start with is sine. Okay, sine pi over three, remember, corresponds to the y coordinate in the coordinate plane. So if it helps you to remember, you can always write down that it's always cosine comma sine. Okay, and what we can do is we can take and we can look at pi over three, which is this angle here. So we're talking about this one right here with an arc length of pi over three. Okay, um, remember that if it's positive, we always rotate counterclockwise. If it's negative, we always rotate clockwise. So on the first one, we rotated counterclockwise to get pi over three. So the coordinate for this first one is one half comma square root three over two. So for this one, the sine is just the y coordinate. So all we would have to do is the square root three over two, and that would be our final answer. Okay, um, the next one that we're going to find is the cosine, and the cosine of pi over three equals the x coordinate. So if we look at the x coordinate, we just have one half. Okay, um, remember that tangent is always y over x or sine over cosine. So when we're setting this up, we can either think of this as y over x, or you can think of it as sine over cosine. So what we're going to do is we're gonna take and put square root three over two over one half. Okay, and then we're going to simplify this fraction because we don't wanna leave it as a complex fraction. So basically what I'm gonna do is multiply the numerator by two and the denominator by two. Essentially, I'm just multiplying by one because that will get rid of my denominators. So I'm just left with the square root of three. Okay, and now we're gonna talk about the three reciprocal functions. Remember that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So for this one, what we're going to do is we're just going to flip this equation. The reciprocal is two over the square root of three, okay? We could have also written it as square root three over two, sorry, yes. We could have also written it as one over the square root three over two, sorry about that. Or you can just flip this one upside down. Remember that in math, we are not allowed to leave a radical in the denominator. It's considered improper. So we would multiply by the square root of three over the square root of three, which is essentially one. Um, but we're basically rationalizing the denominator to get rid of the radical. Okay, when we do that, we end up with two square root three over three. Okay, like I said, I could have put this as one over y, one over the square root three over two, but since it's a reciprocal function, it's easier just to flip it. Okay, um, moving on to the next one. So now we're gonna talk about the secant of pi over three. And remember that secant is the reciprocal function of cosine. So basically what we're going to do is we're gonna take and we're gonna flip this one. We're just going to find the reciprocal of one half. This is one over x, which you could write it as one over one half, or you could just write it as two, because if I flip one half, it becomes two over one. All right, and then the last one that we're going to talk about is the cotangent. Okay, so the cotangent, remember, is the reciprocal of tangent. So it's going to be x over y. OK, 
Okay, so basically if I flip this over, um, I would just take and I would flip this. So this is really square root three over one. So the reciprocal would be one over square root of three. And then again, like we did here, we have to rationalize the denominator. So we're gonna multiply by square root three over square root three. So this simplifies into the square root three over three. All right, so let's move into our second example. B is negative three pi over two. So for B, I'm just gonna give myself some room here. Okay, for this one, we're talking about negative three pi over two. Okay, so when we're looking at this one, What's happening now is we're gonna go in a negative direction. So three pi over two is negative three halves, so we're gonna rotate negative one half, negative two halves, which is just one, and then we're gonna go up to here and this would be negative three halves. So negative three halves, this corresponds two pi over two. So if you're trying to figure out what positive angle that represents, um, it is pi over two. And so the coordinate for this one is just zero comma one. And remember that this is always going to be cosine comma sine. So like, just like we said up there, cosine comma sine. So for this one, we do have some undefined functions. So some of our functions are undefined on this one. So let's start with sine. Sine is easy. Sine negative three pi over two just is the y coordinate, which is one. Cosine negative three pi over two is equal to the x coordinate, which is zero. Okay, so this is my cosine. Let me switch colors. Tangent negative three pi over two, remember is equal to y over x. Okay, so for this particular one, if I put one over zero, that is undefined. So this is undefined. Tangent is not possible. It is undefined because we are dividing by zero. Okay. All right. Moving on into the reciprocal functions. So the reciprocal for sine, remember, is our cosecant. And if I do the reciprocal of one, it just becomes one over one, which is still one. Okay, our secant function, remember that this is the reciprocal of cosine, so this becomes one over zero, which is also undefined. So we would say that secant of negative three pi over two is undefined. C, um, sine and cosecant are both one, cosine is zero, and then our last function that we're going to write down is our cotangent. And for this, it's the reciprocal function, so this time it's x over y, which ends up being zero over one, and this is defined because it's just zero. So cotangent exists, um, but tangent is undefined, secant is undefined. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.